Hello, this is Jean and welcome to my first knitting podcast. I've been wanting to start a podcast for a while now. I love watching these on YouTube and I seriously can't get enough so I wanted to start one of my own. Um, it always seems really fun to be able to talk to other knitters about you know projects that you're working on, projects that you want to work on so yeah, hopefully this becomes that for me. Um, short intro for myself. Like I said, my name is Jean. I'm 27 and right now I'm living in Southern California in the US. Um, I started knitting when I was in elementary school, I believe. I think I had one Chinese school teacher teach me um, during the break time and then from then on I would only knit really simple scarves um, and I didn't pick it back up until when I was in college and in college I discovered Pearl Soho I saw that they had amazing free patterns online so from then on I knit a pair of socks, a pair of gloves, some mittens, um, but never any garments. Um, and then I dropped it. I never really got too invested into knitting at that time. Um, and then uh, COVID hit and I believe like a lot of other people, I really picked up knitting with a frenzy. Uh, the podcaster who really, or is she a podcaster? Well, the person who really got me back into it is Typical Bliss on YouTube. Uh, I started watching her videos and it's like the world of designers open up to me. And um, I've been going strong ever since. Uh, okay, that's enough about me. Um, I will do a standard format, like starting with finished objects, going into works in progress, and then acquisitions. Uh, since this, this is my first podcast, I wasn't sure how far I should go. So I think I'll just do everything I've knit this past fall and winter. Uh, yeah, so it's going to be a lot. But um, I ended these recently and I kind of want to show them off, so whatever, it's my podcast. Uh, let's start with what I'm wearing. So what I'm wearing is the Champagne Cardigan by Petite Knit. Very famous pattern and very lovely pattern as well. I knit this in... Saniskarn Double Sunday in the shade Taupe and the mohair is Knitting for Olive in Oat, I believe. Um, other than swapping out the mohair, everything else I knit exactly to pattern. I knit it in the size extra small. Let me check my notes. <laughs> Extra song, yes. And since I finished it, I've been wearing it every single day. It's it's just a dream. I think I need to knit more cardigans because they're just so much easier to throw on. And they just look so good when layering other clothes. Um, the only complaint I have, this yarn seems to pill like crazy. Um, the double sunday, I mean, even when holding with mohair. And I've seen other people online complain about that as well. I think I saw someone say they knit their Marseille sweater um, in double sunday and it just constantly shedding. So I don't know if I want to use it again in the future. Um, but yeah, other than that, Lovely pattern, um, very tempted to make it again, 
but there's so many other beautiful cardigan patterns out there. I don't know if I can. <laughs> um, oh, and these buttons, these buttons I bought on my trip to New York from one of their local yarn stores. I think they're a little smaller than called for in the pattern, but I think it looks perfectly fine. Um, I love these these buttons. They're the perfect tortoiseshell, I believe they're called. I wish I had bought like 50 more because I feel like this is the only style of button I really like. Um, I think that's it for this one. Next, let's move on to this top of the pile. This beautiful blue sweater is sweater number 14 by My Favorite Things Knitwear, uh, v-neck version. Yes, v-neck version. And this one, um, I know the pattern calls for one strand of fingering and two strands of mohair, but this one I went for one strand of Noral Silk Garden Solo in the color T80 and one strand of Knit Picks Aloft in the shade Celestial. Uh, I thought it would I would get a similar gauge because the Noral Silk Garden sock is not exactly fingering, it's a little larger. But when I knit the swatch, oh, sorry about the lighting change, uh, whatever. Uh, when I knit the swatch, it did come out to be a bit smaller. But since the pattern um, calls for such large ease, I decided to just go for it. Um, and it is smaller than what... I think I knit the size one, yes. I knit the size one. It is smaller than it's supposed to be, but I don't mind. Um, I'll put a little video if, I, if I'm not too lazy later, right here, or here of me wearing it. Um, so when I first, I decided to use this yarn because I saw someone knitting, using this yarn on Instagram. And I just thought it was gorgeous. Uh, let me show you the color a little bit more. Um, yeah, all the little flecks of color just, they just drew me in. But I couldn't find this yarn anywhere online. Uh, but I happened to find it in one of my local yarn stores on um, a shelf in the corner and I just snatched up three balls. Uh, I think each ball was 300 meters, so I used total 900 meters for this, this sweater. Um, oh, that's another reason why I didn't size up, even though my gauge was smaller, because I had a limited amount of yarn. Because I was cheap, I didn't want to buy the fourth ball, uh, so I wanted to make sure I would be able to finish. And the yarn is holding up extremely well. I also wear this sweater all the time. Um, you might be wondering why I'm wearing so many sweaters when I live in Southern California. I don't know, we've been going through some really cold weather lately. Like today, well, cold for me. <laughs> uh, today, the lowest was like 38 degrees. Yesterday, we had hail. It's, it's crazy out there. Um, anyways, back to knitting. Let's not think about climate change. Um, so since my gauge was off, I had a little trouble getting the collar as puffy as I would like it. Uh, when I first knit it, uh, it was much shorter, this collar, than it's shown here. And I already bound off and finished the sweater and everything. And I was really debating with myself if I wanted to, whether I like the color and whether I wanted to go back and fix it. And I decided, yes, it bothered me too much. I wanted the nice back color. So I went back, I undid the, whatever, when you sew, when you sew down the color, <laughs> I undid that and added 1.5 times 
the number of rows then called for. I think that's four extra rows that I added and I like the result now. And I also, for a while I was just wearing it normally, but the collar started standing up. So I went back and put in an elastic and now it lies uh, just how I like it. So yeah, very satisfied with this pattern. Um, yeah. Next one is this. Not sure if you can tell what it is, just like this. But this is the Hilly Hood by Ann Wenzel. I knit this using some leftover yarn, some leftover pearl Soho yarn. The yarn is Flax Down is what it's called in the color Juniper Green. Um, I bought the yarn a long time ago intending to knit a, a scarf for my then boyfriend, but I was really not consistent with knitting at the time. I couldn't get the motivation to work it up, so uh, I never did that. I ended up using the yarn for some petite, I think the weekend slipover by Petite Knit, but I did engage wash. I didn't know when to stop knitting, so it came out extremely oversized and I kind of hate it. <laughs> but this, this hood, I don't hate. Um, it's really nice to just throw on over anything and I think it adds a little bit of, you know, something to your outfit. I normally don't really wear it up because, I don't know, it's, it's, it's hard to pull up. So usually I'll just pull it down and yeah, I think it's, it's pretty cute. The only thing I don't like is actually the color. Um, Maybe I'll knit another hood in a more neutral color. And I also want to try knitting a hood with uh, the strings coming out because that's the part of hood hoodies that I really like and I feel like it really adds to an outfit. Oh, um, another thing. I actually modified the pattern a little bit. I added little flaps in the front and back because I wanted to use up as much of the remaining yarn as I could. Um, the original pattern is just flat. It just cuts off right after the hood is done. But um, I still have yarn left, <laughs> even though I tried so hard. It's because I, I couldn't, I didn't want to continue with the, the flaps anymore. It was getting tedious. Uh, next item. Next item. Let's do this one. So this next one is something that I've actually knit twice. Both should be in this finished objects section, but I gave the other one to my mom for Christmas already and Sadly, I'm really bad at taking pictures, so I don't even have a picture to show you, but it's pretty much like this. Um, the color I knit for my mom was rose clay. Uh, I used knitting for olive heavy merino and soft silk mohair. And this version for myself, I knit, I think the heavy merino color was cream, and I think the mohair was off-white. Um, it's a really simple, basic pattern with this beautiful raglan detail. When I first saw this raglan detail on her website, um, did I mention the designer, My Favorite Things Knitwear? Well, I'm sure anyone, everyone knows this pattern already. <laughs> but yeah, when I first saw this sweater on her website, I fell in love. Um, at that time, I was not as experienced as I was now, so I when I saw the raglan, I was very intrigued to know how it was made. Um, turns out it's just two pearls, two knits, and two pearls again, but it, it, it really makes a beautiful pattern. Um, 
I modified both my mom's and mine so that the raglan detail continues down. How do I show this? Down the body and even into the two by one ribbing down here. Um, in order to do that, obviously for for the sides, you just continue the knits and pearls. And then for the body, I just, uh, when I started the ribbing, I think I just had to add two stitches. So one to the front, one to the back to line it up. So there's no interruptions in the ribbing. Uh, and I really like how it turned out. I, it was, skeptical at first um when i was midway through the body i was thinking oh no why did i deviate from the pattern i should have just done what the pattern calls for but i'm i'm really happy that i tried this out i like the the difference um yeah oh i so both sizes of the sweater, my mom's and mine, they're both size extra small. Um, but for my mom's, I knit like really short sleeves because she's quite short, shorter than I am. Um, by the way, I'm 5'1", so yeah. Um, and I knit the crop version as well because I don't need that much length in my body. But, and I bought the, the recommended amount of mohair in the pattern, which is three balls, and I barely had enough to finish. I literally have just this little ball of scrap left, probably 20 meters left. So that was really satisfying. Um, I'm someone who does like to play yarn chicken. Uh, I have more of the, the heavy merino left but I had a pattern in mind for that so no no worries there and I saw that uh, My Favorite Things Knitwear she released a sweater number nine light which is a updated pattern of this sweater number nine um, that one I think has a smaller gauge and actually has short row shaping so I, I really do wish um, I saw that pattern or I, had, I could have knit that pattern since I don't think I would knit this again. But you know, I, I wear this one a lot. It's the heavy merino has been holding up really well so far. I haven't worn it as much as the champagne cardigan, but but yeah, I do like it. Very satisfied. Next sweater. Oh, I should have done this after the other sweater number 14, but whatever. Here it is. This is, like I said, another sweater number 14, but the regular version with the round collar instead of the v-neck. This one I actually knit for my fiance for Christmas. This one was knit in Knit Picks, Wool of the Andes Tweed in the color Farmhouse Heather and the mohair is from Knitting for Olive. It's in the shade Bark. Bark, yeah. And I really like this, this uh, tweed yarn from Knit Picks. It, it is pulling quite badly, but you know what? I kind of like it on this letter. It gives it a little bit of a rustic feel, but yeah, I do like the, the tweed flex on this, on this yarn. I got gauge pretty perfectly with this yarn and the Knitting for Olive mohair. I knit the size one for my fiance um, because he's not a huge person um, and if he wanted a more fitted sweater instead of the oversized and I think 
Oh, right. For my own sweater number 14 as well, I actually added decreases to the sleeves because uh, I didn't like the look of the really floppy sleeves, so I added some decreases. Sorry, I'm, I'm hearing my cats outside. So I also um, added decreases to this, this sweater. Um, I also did not do the the flaps. What is it called? Whatever. Uh, I just <laughs> I just um, I didn't do the front and back panels at the end. My fiance wanted just the the whole sweater intact. Um, so I mean, you might be wondering why I bought this pattern. Yes, I did buy this pattern and the v-neck pattern. That is because I really wanted to know if there were any other differences um, besides the, the color and I mean the pattern is $7. I, I, I think it's worth it. Um, but if you want to know the only differences between the regular sweater number 14 and the v-neck one is that the they have different gauge and the color, literally just the color like um, so if you know how to adjust the color yourself there's no need to buy both patterns if you want to knit both sweaters if it's my fiance perfectly and the reason is because I asked him to try it on pretty much every day as I was working on it. I was really paranoid about the fit being off and luckily, or you know, because I had him try it on so much, it, it fits him perfectly and he wears it all the time. Uh, the other day actually when we went out to a coffee shop, one of the baristas asked him where he got the sweater and that made me feel really happy. Um, he was able to say, you know, oh my, my fiance made it. At the time, actually, I was wearing this cardigan as well, but I'm not miffed that he didn't ask me about my cardigan. I'm happy enough that one of my knitted items got some attention. Um, okay, that's it for that one. Let's go on to... Let's go on to... This one, oh, and this one, I am so excited about. This one, this beauty, is the Snowy Forest Sweater by Midori Hirose. I think the pattern was first published in one of the Lina magazines, but the individual pattern is available for purchase, so you don't need to buy the whole magazine. When I first saw this letter, I I just fell in love with the cables and this wide neckline. I feel like it's just so elegant. This is my first time doing such large cables. I've done smaller cables like for gloves and stuff, but um, yeah, this is my first time doing such a large cable project. And it's also my first time doing a circular yoke. Um, I really enjoyed doing the circular yoke. I'm not sure if it's flattering on me, but I like how simple it is. Like you're really just knitting a huge circle and then you divide into sleeves and body. Like just how, how elegant is that? Um, so the yarn I used for this, I, I used Pearl Soho Partridge. I don't know the color, just their cream color. I actually got the yarn during their sample sale. They had one quite a few months ago in Orange County and I just snatched the yarn up. Uh, at the time, I think I already knew I wanted to knit the sweater with that yarn because the gauge on the yarn seemed like it would fit this one perfectly. The only thing I was concerned about though is that it seems like the density of this partridge yarn is double what was recommended uh, in the pattern. 
So I was a little worried about that, about how it would affect the sweater. And it is quite a heavy sweater. I think I used 700 grams for this sweater. Uh, but it, I don't know, it's, I think it looks beautiful. And I think the yarn gives a really nice definition to the cables. It looks nice and fluffy, which is what I wanted. The only thing is, you can probably already see it's peeling like freaking crazy. And this is after I've already tried to pull some of the worst pills off. <sighs> it makes me really sad actually. Uh, when I first held the yarn in my hands, it felt beautiful. It's a single strand of yarn and it was amazingly soft. I could put it up to my face and I just wanted to use it as a pillow, but I knew already from that point that it would it would pill and I wasn't wrong. So maybe I'll have to stick to keeping this sweater or only wearing this sweater during special occasions. I don't know. Or maybe I just accept the pilling and let it become fuzzy, a fuzzy sweater. We'll see. But I do, I do really love this pattern. Um, oh, one comment though. Since the yoke is very, very deep, you can see how short the body is compared to the yoke. That means on your arms, the yoke also comes down to about here. So as you can imagine, when you raise your arms in the sweater, the whole bottom part comes up as well. So that part's not the most practical, but it looks beautiful as long as you just keep your keep your arms down. Um, yeah, I, I don't really mind that to be honest. And this this yarn, um, it's really warm. I did knit it at a denser gauge than recommended on the yarn tag, but it turned out fine. Um, Oh, one more comment about this, um, or a few more. Uh, I keep thinking of things that I forgot to mention. Um, the cables, they were really fun sometimes to knit, but when um, they did get really tight, so I think my gauge was, or my tension was too tight when knitting the cables because it was really a struggle. Um, towards the end, when the cables, when you have to cable like nine stitches, it was kind of nuts. Um, it turned out really neat though, so I'm not mad about it. I think next time I just have to just learn to loosen up. I'm also really proud of the ribbing that I did on this project, this one by one ribbing on the, the collar the hem, the bottom hem, and the sleeve. For some reason, the combination of this yarn, the gauge, and the needles turn, turned out the straightest ripping I have ever done. Normally my ripping is pretty average, not, not too neat, not too messy, but yeah, I don't know what happened here, but hopefully my future projects can have ribbing as neat as this one. Okay, let's see what's next. Hmm. Oh, okay. Next one, next couple things are not really fall winter items, but I did finish it in the fall winter, so I'm gonna show them. <laughs> Um, oh, this next one. So I also knit two of these, but again, the other one has been gifted. I gave it to a friend and now I don't have any pictures. I don't know why I don't take more pictures. Um, but it pretty much looks like this one. This is the Moonset Tea by Ozetta Knitwear. 
I knit, so this one is knit in Knitting for Olives. What's Pure Silk, Pure Silk. In the shade Dusty Artichoke and size XS. The other one I knit in a cotton cashmere yarn. I think it was BC Garn. Um, okay, whatever. I think it was BC Garn. They're 90% cotton and 10% cashmere yarn um, in a white color. So, I'll just talk about this one since this is the only one I have. This one, oh, first let's talk about the color. I'm not sure how the color will show up on camera. There's also sun coming out. Um, but I've seen a lot of people knit the knit using the merino and the soft silk mohair in the dusty artichoke shade, and I really loved it. So when I was choosing this yarn, the color for this yarn, I chose the dusty artichoke. But I think the soft silk looks a little more blue or cool tone than I really wanted. Well, it's not going to me, but still, um, for me, myself, um, I would like a more mossy green. And it does look like the merino and soft silk mohair um, have that shade. So I do definitely still want to try those yarns in that color. Um, but hopefully my friend likes it in this color. Um, so this shirt is a drop shoulder t-shirt and this collar detail is knit along with the body and the back so it's really convenient, minimal finishing required and it's finished with a I-cord. Um, so the, one, the first one that I knit for my other friend in white in the cotton yarn, it started rolling up at the edges, the, this I-cord hem. And that's probably because of some property of cotton that I don't really know how to explain. But this one in the silk has stayed down really well. So I would recommend knitting that, that pattern in, in silk or maybe another lighter yarn. Um, not using cotton, or maybe use a different bind off if you do. Uh, I really love the fit of the shirt, and I really want to knit one for myself. Um, oh, I'm not sure if I mentioned this one's, yeah, this one's also going to another friend of mine. And uh, I really want to knit one for myself for the spring and summer, but I don't know if I can get myself to knit the same pattern three times. Like two times is already a lot for me. Um, normally I'm someone who doesn't even watch my favorite TV shows twice, read my favorite books twice. I'm a one and done type of person. I'm always looking for new and better things to be excited about, but this pattern was just so good. I think I, think I do have to knit one for myself. Um, oh, um, one more thing. My row gauge was really off for this pattern for some reason. I think I was off by like six stitches. Um, so in the pattern she does, as you're knitting the, the yoke and the front flaps, she does give you um, an option between a number of rows and the length. But since this pattern, since I was knitting the collar along with the back and the front, I was really nervous about just going off of measurements instead of the number of rows. So I decided to just follow the number of rows, even though my gauge was really off. And I think it turned out pretty nice. Uh, it doesn't, the fit doesn't look too off to me. So. Yeah, just a note if your row gauge is also really off. Normally, normally my gauge is not too 
different. This is the first time it's been so drastically different. Um, it's probably because of the, the silk. I don't know if it's the way I knit with silk. No, oh, it turned out fine, so. Um, okay, my last, no, sorry, it's not my last. Oh my God, it's going so long. I'll try to speed it up. Um, okay, my last garment is this cute little t-shirt. It is the Benny sweater by Kara Knit Ng. I think that's her Instagram name. And this one is knit in three strands of mohair and on humongous needles. Um, I think it's nine mm needles. And I think the size I knit was excess. I can't quite remember. Um, this yarn I bought, I also bought in New York. I think it was Ito N soft silk mohair. And I saw Friday Knits wearing this Benny sweater in one of her videos and I just thought it was so cute so I had to make one for myself. The problem is the the mohair I chose is actually I think 40% silk. Let's see. Yeah, 40% silk and 60% mohair instead of the standard 30% silk. So I think that just caused it to be more holy. It has less fluff. So I definitely, personally, I definitely need to wear a bra under this one. Um, oh, by the way, the shade of this mohair, it's chestnut. And... This pattern is quite a simple raglan pattern. I knit the short sleeve version and the one without a collar. There's no short row shaping or anything, which pers personally for me, I don't really mind because I don't have to spend some time thinking when I'm getting dressed about which way is the front, which way is the back. And I kind of like the way it rides up in the back. Um, I don't know, I, I just think it's a really cute look and hopefully I wear it a lot in the summer. I definitely want to try knitting more all mohair garments just because of how light they are. It's, it's a really nice change um, when you're knitting because when you're, when you're at the end of the sweater, you're like lifting the whole weight with you almost sometimes. Um, so yeah, maybe, oh, one pattern that I've been eyeing is the mohair cardigan by Petite Knit. So maybe I can knit that one. And okay, finally moving on to my last finished object. And um, a warning, it's, <laughs> I've been wearing them every night to go to sleep and they're kind of stretched out, pilled. They don't look that pretty, I'm sorry, but I still wanna show them. These are just some simple rib socks that I knit. One strand of fingering sock yarn and one strand of mohair. Um, there's like a contrast color at the, the toe and the, the gusset and the, the top. Um, so this one, the black yarn is Pearl Soho Pocket Posy, which is the same as their Posy. It's just that it comes in 25 grams instead of 50, which I also bought at their sample sale. And the gray yarn, I think it's from West Yorkshire Spinners Four Ply. I don't know if that Four Ply is part of the name. That's just how I remember it. It's left over from another sock that I made. And the mohair is also from Pearl Soho. Can I remember the name? No, I don't remember. Whatever. It's 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 some mohair from Pearl Soho that again I got at the sample sale. Um, 
Yeah, I kind of just used a basic sock structure and knit it up. I did have to start over a few times to get the fit snug, but it worked out in the end. Um, so this yarn, I don't know why it pills so much. I don't know if I'm really hard wearing on my socks or if I have to knit at a tighter gauge or if it's just the yarn. I did buy a few more skeins of Pearl Soho's Posy, so I'll test those out. Hopefully I can make it work for me. Um, but besides the pilling, I do wear them a lot. They're very warm and I do, I do like them. Uh, one thing about the yarn though, it is a black hand dyed yarn. So it bled onto my wooden needles, very sadly. I, I tried cleaning them off after and a little bit did come off, but but it's still there. Um, actually, let me have it right here, I think. Okay, so these are the needles that I used for the socks and compare them with my regular ones. You can definitely see some discoloration. It's not too bad, but it's, it's sad. So I only read up after that you're supposed to, you know, wash hand dyed yarn before, before you knit with them or else it may stain your needles. So that, that is my bad next time. I don't know, it just seems like such a hassle to have to wash your yarn before you start knitting with it though. I think I'll just avoid hand-dyed black yarn in the future. Okay, that is it for my finished objects. Finally, if I continue doing these podcasts, my finished objects will never be as long as this time, for sure. Let's get on to works in progress. And I only really have one real work in progress. I do tend to be a one project kind of girl. I am a monogamous knitter. And I think it's because I am and project motivated. I just really want to wear whatever I'm wearing as soon as I can. The only times that isn't the case is when I'm knitting for other people because I don't get to keep it at the end. Um, anyways, here it is. My work in progress. I just wanted to show you the cute bag that it's in and my little mushroom charm. It matches the color of my work in progress. So this is the April Cardigan by Petite Knit. And I chose this really vibrant color. Um, the reason why I chose a red color is because this past Chinese New Year, um, my mom told me to wear red for a family gathering and I didn't have any red actually, so I decided, you know, let's, let's try it out. Shade is, oh, the yarn and the mohair. They're both from Knitting for Olive. It's the merino and the soft silk mohair. And this is my first time using this specific combination and I really love it. The size, the needle size is four, I think. And that's that's the sweet spot. I the the fabric that it produces is thin enough and the Oh, hopefully you can't hear my stomach growling. <laughs> Um, let's, let's wrap this up so I can go eat. Um, what was I saying? 
Anyways, I love this yarn combination. I definitely want to knit more in the future. I'm probably going to make her Oslo sweater. I just have to decide on the, the color. Uh, the shade that I bought was pomegranate. Oh, um, I actually thought this red would be more vibrant than it is. I'm not sure how it's showing up on camera, but on their website, it looks like a really deep, bright, rich red. But in person, the red is a little more red orange and the mohair, oh, the mohair, I don't know if you can see, the fluffs are more white than red really. So I was a little sad to see that, but you know what? I still like the, how it knits together. So I'm not complaining too much. My progress so far, I've finished the body and I'm working on the first sleeve. The sleeve, I don't know, it's taking forever. I hate knitting sleeves. Hopefully I can be done soon. I think for the button band, I'm going to do a double knit button band. I first saw Handmade by Florence. She knit her April cardigan using a double knit button band and it looks so cute, it looks so... The finish that it gives, it's just so clean, so I have to do that as well. The buttons that I plan to use for this... Uh, me, let me go get them. So I plan to use these buttons. They're like a lighter tortoise shell, but I was... I'm a little conflicted. I don't think it looks that good with these buttons. I don't know the color. I do also have a couple more options. Why are these bags so hard to open? I have this adorable button, which I think would be really cute, obviously, but it might give it a more dainty look than I'm really going for. I also have, sorry if you can hear the crinkling of the bags, I try to turn it down. I also have this one. I don't know. I really don't know. Well, maybe I have to find some more suitable buttons. Uh, what I really want are just the same buttons that I have on this champagne quarry. Uh, this is why I wish I bought way more at that time. So yeah, that is my April cardigan work in progress. And that's pretty much the only one I have. We can move right along to acquisitions. Um, I made a purchase at yarn.com recently and it just came in yesterday. Um, and I'm really excited about it. I've already swatched one of the yarns. Let me grab it. This, this beautiful yarn is the Noro Madara in, <clears throat> I think, shade one. Yeah, oh, this, this is so beautiful. And I've already knit a swatch for a planned hoodie but I'm not sure how I feel about this lace pattern with it. Yeah, it'll go this way. I'm not sure if it'll be obvious enough. I don't know. I might choose another pattern. <clears throat> but I was, I was influenced by Typical Bliss and High Fiber Knits. I saw that they both knit cardigans from this yarn. And when I saw that yarn.com had it in stock, I just had to snatch it up for myself. I 
do really like the cardigans that they they made, but I kind of wanted to do something different. But if I don't like how the lace pattern turns off with a hoodie, I might just knit it plain or or just end up making a, a cardigan like them. <laughs> I think I would choose the cardigan number eight by my favorite things knitwear because I like the the pockets and the double knit button band. Um, yeah. Oh, the pattern that so the hoodie pattern that I mentioned is from a book, which is part of my acquisition as well. It's this book. It's cosmology and it's part of the Daruma collection. This book and another magazine that I got as well, I got from a friend for Christmas. And let me just show you some of the designs in this. So this is the hoodie that I wanna make. It's the Regolith hoodie by by Kiyomi Bergen. Yeah, it's just, you can see how the lace is supposed to look. This looks so cute. It is a seamed project though, which I'm not excited about, but whatever. Uh, here's some other designs in this book. To be honest, I'm only really interested in making the hoodie. Um, maybe the socks. I'll show you the socks. Everything else is a little out there or a little too uh, frilly for my taste, but maybe, maybe I'll go back to them. Here are the socks. I think are super cute. Also mohair socks. But yeah, that's my plan for that normal yarn. Um, part of my yarn.com order, the, the other parts of that order is, let me try to find it, oh, it's a mess on my desk. This, again, Norl, yes, I love Norl. It's the Hanui Silk in the color 107. So this is actually my second skein of this yarn. The first skein I bought when I went to San Francisco at a local yarn store. Uh, when I bought the yarn, I didn't really have a plan for it. I only bought one skein for some reason. And originally, I was looking through my Pinterest, seeing which patterns I could possibly make with it. And originally, I was going to make the What's the t-shirt called? It's a collared t-shirt. Um, yeah, anyways, I was going to make a collared t-shirt, but I decided not to, and mainly it's because the collared t-shirt, I really like it when it has a clean line for the collar, and with this yarn, uh, as with all normal yarns, it's quite uneven. I didn't want to risk having an uneven edge, so I decided to scrap the idea. And I found another project that I really want to make. It's called the... Oh, my brain... <laughs> I think it's... Oh, okay, it's the Breezy Back Blouse by, by Wool and Beyond. Um, so that pattern originally calls for... <clears throat> wool and mohair held together but because the back is really open and i plan to make the short sleeve version i want it to be a more spring summer clothing item and i thought this yarn would fit really well because the gauge of one strand of this held together held together is pretty much the same as the wool and the mohair held together and it's also 35% silk and 65% wool, so hopefully that silk will keep me warm. Um, 
And for the contrast color for the shirt, I plan to plan to use some leftover brown mohair. I think, I mean not mohair, just some brown wool. I think it'll look really cute. And last bit of yarn are these three balls of yarn. They are Lana Grossa Cashmere 16 Fine in the shade Ash Green. These balls I bought at another local yarn store, this time in SoCal. It's actually, even though the name has cashmere, it's not all cashmere. It's only 10% cashmere and it's 10% polyamide and 80% virgin wool. I bought this yarn because I was looking for some cashmere yarn for Petite Knits Elizabeth blouse. That blouse, it's the blouse of my dreams. I've been wanting to knit her mod tee for a while, but something about the color and the sleeves looked a little chunky. And so when she came out with the Elizabeth blouse, I, I was so happy. It's, the, the color is a little smaller, the fit is a little um, more fitted. Um, yeah, so immediately I wanted to buy some yarn to make that, that sweater. The problem is that sweater calls for cashmere and yeah, cashmere is really expensive and it comes in 25 gram balls. Um, that store that I went to, they did carry the cashmere that Petite Knit recommends. I don't remember the brand. Anyways, I think each ball there was maybe $29 and I just could not, uh, I don't even know how many balls I would need, but I just did not want to spend that much on a single garment. Um, so I continued walking around the store and I saw this yarn. I actually didn't notice that it was just a cashmere blend. I thought it was all cashmere and I thought I was um, I was getting a steal because these are 50 gram balls. I think each ball was $16, so definitely not cheap, but way more cheaper, way cheaper than actual 100% cashmere. Um, I also didn't notice, I don't know, I really don't know anything about cashmere yarn and I've never knit with cashmere, but it's like a chain knit, I think this is called. Uh, I don't know if you can see, but yeah, it looks like a chain. So I haven't swatched this yet. Hopefully it matches the pattern. Hopefully I get a beautiful garment out of it. I did see that she, she also suggests one strand of knitting for olive merino and soft silk mohair to make that that blouse but her version is cashmere and i like how not fuzzy it looks actually i do want a more clean look for that kind of collar blouse so maybe next time i'll have it started so i can show show you guys i think that is it if if you've watched all the way until now, thanks for joining me in my first podcast. I don't know if I'll continue doing this. It is really fun getting to blabber my head off about everything that I'm doing. Um, so we'll see. But yeah, thanks for watching.